welcome back everybody. The players have had their drinks break, which marks the three quarter mark of the day's play. Now the score is 98 for two, our uh, lower plenty. Uh, they, we are coming into the 40th over for their first innings. Unfortunately, um, we already have seen Diamond Creek bat. Diamond Creek batted first and were bowled out for a score in the mid 40s, which means the lead is about 50. And with seven overs to play, there's probably not enough time to really have a dash at Diamond Creek in their second innings. So you would imagine that Blower Plenty will probably try to bat out the innings and then regather their force about what they're going to do uh, come day two next week. As the first ball, uh, we're back is a dot ball, left it alone outside the off stump. And of course I am Chucker Wilson, your head commentator and co-host um, here at uh, Channel 8, the local sports network, and I'm joined of course by Damien Hayden Haydos. Welcome back Haydos. G'day Chucker, it's good to be back in the country box, it's Petra oh. Sam Bowles and Anson gets on the wild hoosh. Wild hoosh. So, the run rate is continuing to decline for lower plenty. Uh, the lead they have built up is nowhere near what they probably would have liked considering how long they've been batting for. And so, as he comes into bowl. Anson defending there. Yep. Straight back up down. So, done a good job so far, Petrosino. This is coming now into his sixth over. He's got none for 13 so far, so doing a good job. Yep. into bowl. Oh, it's inside edge and goes down to fine leg, but there is no fine leg. It's the short fine leg. He runs around and they get the two. Well throw there, but never really any risk of uh, any extra run. So score moves on to now three figures, 100. 100. And uh, was that a polite round of applause from the, <laughs> the batting team? Well, because they said nothing when they won. <laughs> then uh, I think it's going to come up now. Petrosino once more. And play down the leg side. Kind of, that was a very bad shot because he sort of flinched at it and sort of stepped inside of it as he tried to play the hip glance, and in the end he uh, missed it. So a few. He's not. He's been batting for a long time, but he still hasn't gotten into those stroke play. And it's a wild hit and caught in mid wicket. We just were able to get the mid-wicket fielder into the frame just as he caught it. It wasn't the best piece of uh, camera work, but the third wicket has fallen for lower plenty with the score at 100. A long uh, stance there from Anderson coming to a uh, disappointing end. We're starting to sort of tick along the score there. Bang well with Nisei, but unfortunately falls victim there to a, a, a loose shot by anyone's stance on it. So. Well, uh, before the drinks break was taken, there was that one big shot over the head of the mid-off fielder for four down as a straight hit, and that sort of symbolised maybe this is what we're going to be seeing. We're going to be seeing more expansive stroke play. But then it looked like it was a similar type of attempt, and yet he just did not do anything right there. He didn't get to the pitch of the ball, he didn't keep his wrists into position, he didn't keep his arms into position, and it just was an ugly, ugly slog that went, it was basically fielding catching practice for, uh, is that the end of the over? So, end of the over, three for a hundred. And welcome back. So it is three for a hundred here, and it looks like um, a continuation. Of Max Trainer. Max Trainer, who has taken six wickets in the F2 so far. Oh! He glanced away to Farah at square leg, so not pick up a single. The ball is still swinging just a little bit in, in, in towards the right hander. So, even though the ball is quite old, um, he's able to get it to move. Looks like Stevens has come up a step and a half or so behind the stumps, as we see. Trainer again. Oh, 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 what a bad shot there. Um, 
He, he noticed how it was short of a length, he got into position to play the hip glance, but then he noticed that then as the ball didn't bounce as much, he just didn't know how to react properly to adjust, and in the end played an ugly nothing shot. Luckily uh, it didn't bounce so low that it hit the stumps. Trainer into bowl. And that one is late cut, down into the backward point region, and point has to run around, and he picks it up just before the boundary, throws it in, and they only take the two. Well play there from Nisse, who's uh, starting to get himself going, was doing most of the scoring with Anderson there. He'll certainly have to take the more leadership role there for the rest of this day. Now the maps is still on lower plenty side, just because Diamond Creek were bowled out for such a low score, in such a short period of time. Oh, down the leg side. So, like I said, if you expect um, everything to go reasonably well, you would expect to bowl Diamond Creek out for about 75 uh, or 40 overs. And so, there is pl there's plenty of time next week to do that, considering how far they're, they're ahead they're of the game. But that's if everything goes according to plan. So if Diamond Creek put up a real good fight and score over 100 and bat for over 50 overs, then Lower Plenty probably can't win. And so Lower Plenty are kind of, they have to have everything go right for them to get outright points. It's not a situation where they have enough flexibility in the, the kitty, because they're running out of that kitty because they're batting so slowly and they're not making progress in this game. O'Connor might have a different thought process behind how to treat the rest of this game as the trainer comes in and uh, play away from Nissan on the leg side and then we'll pick up a single, always one there. His thoughts might be to give some of the guys in the middle or a crack because they haven't had much of a bat this season. End of the over, so just the, uh, just the oh, three runs off it, so it is 103 for three. Oh, it's a full toss and... It's caught! Caught by the mid-on! So, it was a full toss, about waist height. He tried to play a pooly, short, shoddy slap thing. Uh, it was um, badly played. It was a top edge. The fielder at mid-off had to run back, get his arms around his body. Um, it looked for a second, a split second there, that he had gotten himself into a very bad position. But then he adjusted just in the last split second in order to take that catch and so the fourth wicket has fallen for lower plenty and a polite a, a momentary round of applause for that batsman uh, it was over before you even noticed it had begun so doing a good job here Diamond Creek um, it'll be disappointing you say with that shot there couldn't really pick anywhere to hit it from when you get that full toss that's in your say baseball strike zone you really can pick wherever you want to hit it there He's actually picked out the one spot you want, don't want to, which is with an arm's reach of a fielder there. So the, the, the crowd which were gathering seems to have migrated away, and so the crowd has declined somewhat. There's only the one and two p persons that are hanging around still. Probably they've gone over to the ones game that's happening across the road at the Coventry Oval. So 4 for 103 and we've got our uh, new batsman in the first left hander of the innings. Oh, and it's a leading edge but picked up by there by point. And to give you an idea of how left handers have gone this match, so we've got Trainer who made naught off three deliveries, we've got Stephen who made naught off one delivery, so it's not hard to be the best left hander of the match. Yep. <laughs> Uh, let's see, slip, gully, backward point, almost a l deep gully, cover point. Petrosino in again and defended comfortably. Mid off, mid on, uh, short fine leg, mid wicket, and then a very wide mid on. So two mid ons, a gap at point, and a gap at extra cover. Free stand fill, there's Petrosino in once more. This one is driven just straight back to him, so no addition to the score. So I would expect to pi pitch it at about the batsman's leg stump, which means if he tries to play a p drive shot, 
uh, he can't get runs and he has to try to go inside it and play a cover drive in order to get the gaps in, on the offside. I think it's a very good tactic. And a bad ball. It's cut down into the deep fine leg area. And that's four. First runs in the match for a left hander there and it was actually really nicely played there. Got right on top of it there and hit it behind square which you really do have to make sure you pick either side of the square leg field from there for those loose ones and he certainly did on that occasion. So, after bowling a lot of good full stuff that really uh, kept the batsman wondering, ruins the over with a short ball on the leg side. And, ooh! Oh, another attempt at the hip glance, top edge. This time it went all the way to mid on, and it was a diving attempt, but unable to take the catch. And the cameraman lost it for a second there, so I'm sorry we didn't get the full footage. But anyway, it's uh, 107 for four. Okay, so the new batsman, uh, helmetless, hatless, is about to face his first ball from trainer. Oh, that's right in front, that's right in front, appeal, appeal! Some good coaching there from your own Chucker Wilson there, but it is being really good bowling there, but we can see that we've got the intentions are to lift the scoring right there, because even though it's towards the end of the day, every over counts at the end of all, so it doesn't matter if it's necessarily aggressive now and you lose your wicket, because they at least are trying to lift the scoring right. Uh, okay. So, we'll just wait for this ball. Trainer into bowl. And is right in front of the, pat the stumps again. And this will be out. This should still be out. Oh! It's not out. <laughs> dear me. So a very difficult leg by after all of that. <laughs> so he was hit in front of the stumps. The ball dribbled out to short fine leg. Um, the non-striker went for the run. The striker didn't. And then the fielder at f short fine leg threw it in. But... It was a wild throw and the bowler had to run back in order to collect it and then he ha was too far away to knock the bales, remove the bales, he had to throw it. Let's train her in and again driven. This one falling short of Mackenzie there at mid-off so it'll be a dot ball. All in all, just a, not a great piece of cricket apart from the bowling. Yep, trainer is bowling very well. I'm, I'm impressed. I think nothing from the Diamond Creek bowlers would suggest that they should be at the bottom of the ladder. They have just bowled excellent, excellent throughout this entire day. It's just a shame that their batting is um, unremarkable, shall we say. Well, obviously the injury to Pierce there was a, a big blow and he's certainly there, one of their strike bowlers, but there are opportunities for your, say, your 5th, 6th and 7th bowlers when there is an injury to your strike bowler, and I think they needed it because for a long time Pierce has been that go-to man, so it's time for a new generation to come through. Trainer in. Oh! Wild! Hoosh! And that was a very bad shot again. Uh, did not move his front foot towards the pitch of the ball and just sort of swung from his standing position. Just got nowhere near it. And there are gaps through that offside. Between point and mid off, there's just one man, so there's gaps. And, ooh, played it late, but didn't go onto the stumps. So, it's another uh, successful, uh, another good over from Diamond Creek. This one conceding only the one run, which was the leg by, which was the near run out. It is 108 for four. Okay, so, according to our calculations, <coughs> the, 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 um, Day's play should be over in three overs time, which is about 12 minutes. Petrosino once more. To the new batsman. And it's a hit. It goes down to the square leg boundary. And the fielder is running, running, running. That's a boundary. And if you are going to go for the wild hoosh to actually connect to it, that's the way to do it there. So... Certainly, it does take a lot of strength, and most of your shot is strength as opposed to technique or timing. Yeah. Um, but you certainly just gotta make sure you connect. You have to use your strength. You have to get your bus your center of gravity and your muscles in your body into position in order to slog it properly. Which this batsman is doing. Oh! That was not a good shot. Skewed over extra cover, so it's likely to be two. I wouldn't have thought any extra. 
So you're talking about Dominic Creek's bowlers, and even at the top of the telecast, we were talking about how it was definitely their strength of, well, not only this side, but also the third level as well there, the fact that they've got a lot of bowling options there. You wouldn't have thought in most teams that trade would be a sixth option there, uh, but that's how deep their bowling is. It's just, yeah, it's just a shame that their batting is just so awful. I, I don't, I don't understand. I don't, I don't understand it. Well, we'll talk about the batting options uh, for lower grades at the moment as Petrosino comes in. Ooh. Uh, one of the things they do miss out on, of course, um, with what naturally happens in these grades is that you, you tend to have batsmen that are playing lower grades who are potentially better who just want to play the lower grades. And I think the best example is coming from the same example, the 7th 11, when you got Carr and Gleason who made hundreds last game. Um, they don't get the opportunity to select them. Petrosino again. Oh! And it goes down to third man. Uh, it was an attempted pull shot sort of thing, and in the end they'll get one leg by. So the batsman is getting just as many runs off the bat as he is leg by. So, so what you actually miss out is the uh, opportunity to sort of pick those other guys who may be making more runs because they are exclusively say the 6th or 7th 11 players, so it is a challenge that they face, they do have to just pick the emerging players, uh, give them opportunities and hope they can come through. It's into bowl, and it's driven straight to mid-off for a dot ball. So with just a matter of a few balls left, the decision, uh, the, the, the idea of declaring and having a dash at them has not materialised. And so, uh, lower plenty will bat till stumps. And it's a full toss, and it's driven, and the fielder at mid-off is unable to cut it off. It is slams into the metal fence at a straight hit. Four runs there. 119 uh, for four. End of the over. Okay, so trainer is to continue to bowl. This is, is it, will this be the last over from the childcare centre round? I believe so. This is the 67th over, and we've of course got 68 and usual F2 days play. So the train keeping his uh, mostly ring field. They've actually removed the slip. Driven. Cup at mid wicket, so no run. Actually, no, I have picked up a single. That's a mm, fast running there. Exactly right there. One of the things that you actually could have an option of doing while playing is uh, actually not making a decision until, say, next week and deciding whether to clear then or not. And that way, giving Diamond Creek the least amount of opportunity to mentally prepare for batting. Trainer again. This one's defended. So let's have a look at the field. Uh, the field is mostly a ring. Uh, oh, everyone's moving now. So. Fine leg is straightish, square leg, a, a wide-ish mid-wicket, then a straight mid-on, straight mid-off, cover, extra cover. And it's nicely cut, but Farrah will pick that up at point, so no run. And um, so, straight-ish mid-off, a cover, extra covery cover, a point, gully, slip. So ring field both sides, pretty much everyone is the same distance away from the bat. And it's driven and it's well fielded there by mid off and mid on, but they get a run from it. So it seems a bit desperation now, just trying to pick up whatever runs they can in the dying, um, the, the dying sunlight of uh, today's play. That single takes the lead to 78, so it's about that target we thought was going to be plenty to try and defend. So it might be a case of just bowling straight away next Saturday. Oh, inside edge onto the pads. And it's very strange that that was the time they sort of appealed when it was obviously not out. And they've moved a fielder, so the fielder at on the offside has moved on, so now it's one, two, three, four. Four on the offside and one, two, three, four, five on the leg side. Two square legs. This is straight up and this is going to be a wicket here. And the batsman that was trying to hit the ball hard and trying to advance the scoring has uh, fallen to what could have been a quite um, profitable shot there. Uh, tried to, it was short of a length, tried to play the pull shot. 
top edge and the short fine leg has run around to the backward square leg sort of region to pick it up. So they've actually come a long way. That was the wicket to make it 5 for 121. Remembering that Lord Plenty were none for 61 early this afternoon there. Yeah, this, is, this, isn't, this doesn't look like a batting performance from a team who uh, wants to be Premiership favourites or should be top of the ladder after having two remarkable wins because the way that they have responded to this very good dis um, bowling from Diamond Creek suggests that they're more of a middle range team, not, uh, not one of the best. So that's the end of the 67th over of the day. 60th over, it is 121 for 5. Welcome back. So this is the 46th over of Lower Plenty's innings. And by our calculations, it should be the final over of the day's play. So we see Dave Ramsey going back into the attack. A little bit of a strange decision in terms of the bowling choice. We, it's just hit 5 o'clock now. So we've had a very um, good fast over rate. Um, good, very good play. We're going to a good sportsmanship. Uh, slip is way too straight there. <laughs> you could take a meter to your right. What are you doing? Um, anyway, Ramsey in. This one's left alone outside the off stump. Slip, gully, point, cover, uh, short extra cover, mid off, mid on. A uh, square leg and then a backward square leg short fine leg. So no one at mid wicket and no one at third man, no one at fine leg. Rams into bowl and a bad ball down the leg side. So the batsman decides to leave it alone. The batsmen don't seem to have any desperation to score as many runs as possible right now, just before the, the day's play over and just before what would be a hypothetical uh, weekly. Um, uh, declaration. Have to have enough already. Ramsey in, and this is it's driven through the gap. Uh, uh, they don't take the run. <laughs> I would have thought there would be a single there. Not exactly fielded with much uh, intensity there. The, bat, the, the fielder had to run about five meters to his right, and to, to make a go at the non-striker stumps would be a, quite a physical effort. And it squirts it, and the fielder at point collects it. Another dot ball. So we've had four dot balls. So just, just really good bowling here from Diamond Creek, and no urgency, no energy from Lower Plenty. What is the slip fielder doing? Oh, left alone. No, the slip fielder has to. St <laughs> Has to move to his right. He's not going to get anything there. Generally, as a weird keeper, you certainly cover your right shoulder. There. You naturally are used to going to the right. So the only thing they can think of is that because Stephen is a left-hander, that it's Don's preferred hand. And what was that? Was that a beamer? Not as such. Uh, so they've not called it as a no ball, which means it's the day's play. Alright, so we're going to quickly um, take a break and when we come back we're going to have the, the stumps discussion. <laughs> 